My work has offered me a lot of opportunities to observe people as they engage with art. And my life has offered me a lot of opportunities to observe myself as I engage with art. And I've come to realize that there's a series of questions that people tend to ask when they're engaging with something that create a deeper and deeper and more and more complex definition of the thing that they're engaging with. And these questions tend to be asked in a certain order. And it's an order of increasing importance. And it's also an order of increasing rarity to the point that sometimes the last few questions are never asked. But I'll begin at the beginning with the first question. And the first question that people tend to ask when they're engaging with something is what? What is this? What am I engaging with? Is it a painting? Is it a drawing? Is it a sculpture? Is it a dress? Is it a ballet? Is it a building? Is it an opera? And that might seem obvious, but it's the first step in the definition of the thing. And the next question tends to be who? Who made this? Yes, it's a dress. Who designed it? Yes, it's a painting. Who painted it? Yes, it's an opera. Who composed it? And that answer will give a human component to the definition. The next question tends to be where? Yes, it's a building designed by Frank Gehry. Where was it built? Yes, it's a ballet by Balanchine. Where was it choreographed? And the answers to those questions tend to give a social component to the definition. The next question then is, is when? Yes, this is a film by Jean-Luc Godard made in France. When did he make it? Yes, this is an etching by Rembrandt made in the Netherlands. When did he etch it? And the answers to those questions give a historical component to the definition. The next question is very important. It's how. How did they do it? Yes, this is a film by Jean Renoir made in France on the verge of World War II. How did he do it? How did he make it? What shots did he choose? What angles did he shoot them from? How did he cut those shots together? How did he direct the performers? How did he do it? And that's very, very important. And the definitions that that question provides are very valuable. They're very meaningful. And a lot of people spend huge parts of their lives asking that question. And it's important but it's not the most important question. The most important question and the rarest question is why. Why did they do it? What were their motivations? What are their intentions? What were they reacting to? Why did they do it? And it's at that point when you ask that question and begin to seek those answers that you'll get the most useful and the most helpful definitions from the, from the thing. And it's not only that, that question has two faces. Not only why did they do that, why do you like it? Why are you looking at it? Why are you responding to it? Are you responding to it because it makes you feel good about yourself? Does it appeal to your vanity or to something larger? Do you like it because you feel you should? And why do you feel you should? It's at that point that you'll begin to have the most truly valuable 
and useful definitions of things, of both the thing and of yourself. Because of all of the questions that can be asked about something, the only truly important one is why. Because every other question, no matter how important the answer is, when it comes down to it, is just trivia. Mm -hmm.